For those of you who are taking communicative abilities, one, today is October 26, 2022, and today I want to give you an overview of what I would look at and review as we work this week to finalize our essays from Unit 2. Now, on Monday, we talked about APA. We talked about, we looked at some examples of uh, APA, and I've included some information here along with a video that reviews basically what we talked about, but I'm giving you some examples of some very common, uh, some common references and how to list those references according to APA. Today, I'd like for you to take a look at some of the links, some of the information we've already talked about in terms of developing a problem statement and a thesis statement. On Monday, we we included some um, some forum posts that uh, asking you to include a problem statement and from that problem statement taking the indirect question and converting that to a direct question and then following that up with an answer to that direct question by including a thesis statement. Now I took a look at your post and again our focus here is to align the indirect question and the direct question. And what I mean by that is looking at some, some examples here. We have here a, an example of a problem statement. Then below that, we have a direct question, and then we have the thesis statement. So again, remember that the indirect question is coming from the problem statement. The problem statement includes three things. It includes a topic, an indirect question, and a significance. We all need to include the exact prompt that begins, I wish to learn more about, and then something general, a general topic. And then we continue with the prompt by using the word because, or the phrase, because I want to know. Now after the phrase, because I want to know, all of you will have either a how question word or a why question word. Okay, we're setting up or introducing the main question that's going to be our focus for our essay. So here in this case, we have a how question. How the use, I want to know how different technological aids can help students. Okay, this is the question. Now, the direct question is going to be the direct question equivalent. That is, we're going to ask exactly the same question, but instead of asking it indirectly, we're going to ask it directly. So we have to pay close attention to the grammar when we form a direct question. We begin with the question word, the, an auxiliary, the subject, and then the main verb. So in this case, we have the indirect question. I want to know how different technological aids can help students. Now the direct question is, how does or how do different technological aids help students practice vocabulary? Okay, that's the question. How do different technological aids help students? That's the direct question. I'm using exactly the same words that I have here, of course, being careful with changing the order, which is required in English when we write a direct question. Okay, this is kind of an exercise to see how we, if we know how to write an indirect question versus a direct question, okay, to, to paying close attention to the grammar. Now, the answer to this qu direct question, the question now is, how do different technological aids help students practice vocabulary? This is the question. Now I need an answer. Now, in the thesis statement, which we'll talk about in greater detail here in a second, we need a transition to begin with, but what we're concerned about for this exercise here, when we're trying to answer a direct question, we're more, we should be more focused on the topic and the claim, the main claim, the, the proposition, the point of view, the opinion that we want to make. And we can find that information by looking at the text that I've selected here. So again, the question is, how do different technological aids help students practice vocabulary? The answer, 
English language teachers can use technological aids to help students practice vocabulary. Notice that enough keywords are in there that the answer is directly related to the question. And this is what I'd like for you guys to focus on. We're focusing on here on the indirect question here, the direct question here, and the topic and the claim that's located here. Now, I am looking for a completed thesis. That is, I am looking for a transition, as we have here, a topic. This is the topic. This is the claim. This is our connector. We're using by because we have a how question. If, we have, if you have a why question, you're going to use the connector because. And then after our connector, we need a list of three key points. It can be in the form of a word, a phrase, or a clause, but we need a list. That is, we need three ways or three reasons. Reason number one, comma. Reason number two, comma. And reason number three. Or, this is the first way, comma. This is the second way, comma. And this is the third way, comma. I'm sorry, period. All right, so this is a completed thesis. So, when you're reviewing today, this, the relationship between these three, make sure you pay close attention to what it takes to include a completed thesis. This thesis statement answers the direct question, and then where does it go? It goes in two places in our five-paragraph academic essay. It goes in two places. Number one, it goes at the very end of our introduction paragraph. And number two, it begins or it should be the first sentence of our conclusion paragraph. We're going to restate and reword. That is, we're going to paraphrase what we have as a thesis statement at the end of the introduction paragraph, and we're going to begin the conclusion paragraph saying exactly the same thing, but in different words. We're going to paraphrase what we said at the end of the introduction paragraph. All right, the reason we want to state our thesis, our thesis statement again is the main idea of our essay. The reason we want to do that, we want to do it twice. We want to remind, at the beginning, we want to introduce the idea. So we tell the reader, okay, this is the main idea of my entire essay. This is what I'm going to discuss in greater detail in the three body paragraphs. The conclusion paragraph, we're simply reminding the reader, okay, this was the main idea. Again, we're going to keep it in the present tense, but you're just reminding the reader again, okay, this is the main idea of this idea of this thought. In the conclusion paragraph then, after the thesis statement, then you can talk about why it's important, the significance, the relevance. How does this connect to the real world or other context? Why is this important? And then follow up with a concluding, a closing statement. All right, so conceptually, this is what we're doing here when we are trying to come up with a good thesis statement. Instead of going right to the thesis statement, we need a problem statement to have some kind of idea about the topic and also the significance, generally speaking. Like, why, why are you doing this? Why is this idea that you have, this indirect question, why, what's the purpose? Well, the purpose is to conclude our prompt using the connector in order to, right? And it gives us some insight. It should give us some insight into the purpose of writing this essay, the purpose of even having this thought, this thesis, right? And this is why in the problem statement at the very beginning, we want to think about what that significance is and who, who is our target audience? To whom are we, we writing our essay? What's the purpose? Imagine yourself writing this essay and giving it to someone in the real world for a purpose, for a reason. Are you trying to persuade someone? Are you targeting new English language teachers? Are you targeting English language teachers only in Mexico? Maybe this problem is more relevant to our local context here. Maybe this letter, this essay, this idea is intended for parents or administrators or other colleagues with more experience or teachers who are not used to using technology or, and we can just go on and on and on. 
Imagine why you're writing this essay. This is not just for the purpose of this class. I'd like for you to think of a legitimate situation where you would be asked to present your ideas in a formal way, in an academic way, based on an idea. That idea we're going to call a thesis, and we're trying to be very specific in how we structure this thesis statement so that there is a flow, that it makes sense. Okay? So, in the virtual classroom, if we go back to our week 12 module, I've added some links, and all of these links, there's nothing new here. This is all uh, different concepts, things that we've talked about so far this semester. But I think it's worth going over whatever we need to go over. I would start again with the problem statement. I mean, let me back up. I would start with making sure that you have at least three articles, primary research articles, according to APA, as we talked about on Monday. And then once you have, you feel that you have your references set, that you have an, at least three peer-reviewed journal articles, then continue on with the problem statement. Review once again your problem statement that you had before, or maybe you're still working on it and making changes to it. Find the relationship between the problem statement and the thesis statement by way of the indirect, indirect question. Again, that's what we did on Monday in the forum. Review again the introduction paragraph, the conclusion paragraph, and the meal plan. We have three types of paragraphs when we write an academic essay, a five-paragraph essay. We have an introduction paragraph, which has its own structure. We have a conclusion paragraph, which has its own structure. We have a meal plan, which is designed for any body paragraph. We're going to have three body paragraphs. So the meal plan applies to how to develop a coherent uh, body paragraph. The conclusion paragraph and the introduction paragraph, I'm including what to include and the order in which you should include it so that you write a coherent introduction paragraph and a coherent conclusion paragraph. So today I want to provide a general overview in the form of this video, share it with you, and Open this up today in class to address as many questions as necessary. I specifically want to talk with those who had issues with plagiarism. I want to sit down and discuss your text to clarify any doubts that you might have. And we'll field questions as time permits. Okay, so our goal is to complete our or finish our making changes to our essay for this week. And I think by checking these links, checking this information, uh, is, I think, a good way to focus on what it is that you need to focus on in, in terms of completing, um, in terms of completing the, the final draft. Once you have completed structurally, right, uh, the order, like you, the content, the information that you have is in its correct order and you feel like you are finalizing your essay and you want to check finally the grammar, the punctuation, etc. make sure to use either Microsoft Editor, you can use Grammarly, you can also use Grammar Coach at dictionary.com. I think we've talked about that in class. You'll have to sign in, but once you sign in, you'll have access to Grammar Coach. So I'll show you real quick here what that looks like. If you go to writing, grammar coach, this will allow you to copy and paste your text in and you can get uh, some results over here on the right hand side of your screen. Now you can also do the same in Microsoft, Microsoft Editor, just to show you what that looks like. You go into Microsoft Word, I'm showing you what it looks like online. You should have access to the same editor in, uh, in your desktop app. 
but you have your text here you can just go in and click editor and get some results here okay so it's not perfect and always my advice is if you're not sure what to change if you're not sure why or how this makes it better you're better off not changing it okay just because there are some results here or suggestions on making changes it doesn't always mean that that's the best thing to do use your best judgment or use the results from the editor to base some of your questions on if you're not sure what it means by inclusiveness or formality etc those could be the basis of questions that you have but don't make the mistake of rushing to the editor or grammarly um, when you're still revising the text okay there's a we have two terms here that apply to where we are so far in the process of writing for most of us we're either revising it or we're editing it we're either revising our text or we're editing our text revising our text means that we're still moving sentences around we're still adding for example a thesis statement maybe we don't have a hook to begin the introduction paragraph so we need to add a famous quote or an essential question or maybe an important or impactful fact or statistic with a citation those are all revisions okay these are uh, types of edits types of changes to our text that we need to do first before we actually make just the final edits which are just related to generally grammar issues punctuation capitalization things that really don't imply actually moving ideas around or sentences around so again revise first then edit make sure you are revising changing first the text before you worry about checking for grammar it doesn't make any sense to check for grammar and try to clean it all up in terms of grammar and and capitalization when you still really need to make more structural changes which are actually more serious typically than uh, issues of grammar or or punctuation okay so if your text is incoherent because the order is is not logical for example or maybe you're just missing key aspects of your text that's going to be a more serious issue than whether you capitalized or you failed to capitalize the first word of a sentence so let's prioritize revise first then edit and ask questions throughout this process as needed I, my expectation from everyone is to first review the information in the virtual classroom. First review all the links that we have here, all of the videos. We have four weeks, with this week, five weeks of videos and text and audio that relate to what we've discussed in class. So my expectation first is that you are familiar with everything that has been uploaded to the virtual classroom. And then you base your questions on what's been uploaded here. So starting in week five, we have videos, we have assignments that we've completed. Week six, writing your first body paragraph. This is the meal plan. Okay, this was an assignment specifically uh, designed to I'll help you with the first paragraph thinking about the meal plan perhaps for the first time thinking about where the topic sentence needs to be placed where should I place my evidence making sure the evidence comes before the analysis making sure we have good balance between evidence and analysis making sure that the final sentence of each body paragraph has a conclusion or a linking sentence that that moves from one idea from one paragraph to the next idea to the following paragraph week seven we have additional videos assignments and links all of this information uh, is is important that you're familiar with that you have a chance to review this week eight this video here very important in terms of formatting your word document if you have questions about spacing indentation French indentation if you're not sure what that means if you're not sure what your essay should look like in terms of formatting according to APA, this video, I think, is a good place to start. 
So take a look at the video if you haven't already. Take a look at it as many times as you need to as you're making changes to your text. Additional links and assignments have also been included here in week 8. And then finally down here week 12, which is our focus for this week, I've included additional links. Okay, some of this is repetitive, but I'm trying to keep it as straightforward as possible. All right, if this helps for you to go directly to the information that you need to find what you need, great. If you want to just go week to week as we've done uh, in the past, that's certainly acceptable. Whatever works for you, but please consult all of the information first before asking questions. Okay, it's, um, you know, either, you know, if you're looking at this information and you have questions, then definitely ask right away. Send me a chat in Microsoft Teams, ask me in class. A lot of times, though, when I look, when students want me to review their work, okay, it's, Sometimes it's obvious when either there's some confusion in terms of, let's say, how to develop an introduction paragraph, or whether or not they haven't consulted first the, the information in the virtual classroom. So check first, all right? I'm trying to make it as clear as possible, but if something is not clear, then that's when I would try to ask questions, okay? Instead of maybe just a blanket question without having referred to any information here in the virtual classroom, asking general questions about your, uh, ab about your text. All right, so this is going to be our focus, guys, for this week. And uh, today, specifically in class, I'm going to upload this video and share it with everyone. This will be what we look at, and uh, this will be what we work on for the week, okay? All right, so we'll see everybody in class.